welcome to this uh, session of roundup of what all we have covered. So, we looked at case analysis also, how to do the analysis of a case, then we in this we said we look at the performance of an organization over a period of time then information on organization's history and operations environment, then look at data related to the functional areas like marketing, finance, operation and human resources. Then make you make use of this to present to students a realistic situation. So, we learnt what are the objectives of the case method. So, the main idea is to acquire skills to apply theoretical knowledge to practice. So, the case method helps you to diagnose the problem, analyze and evaluate alternatives and formulate an action plan. And you also try to find answers to these practical problems. You get an exposure to variety of organizational and managerial situations. We looked at what are the benefits of the case method. One is the clear thinking in complex situations. You can be more rational, creative also you can apply your quantitative knowledge, you can recognize the value of information, group communication and there can be better written communication also through the case method. You, you are also having the advantage of, advantage of applying certain personal values to the decision making process. We also looked at how one can develop a case study. So, going through the company, then we looked at what are the key fina financial ratios we should consider, that is the profitability ratios. In that, we look at seven ratios, that is gross profit margin, operating profit margin net profit margin, then the return on total assets, then the return on stockholders equity, then the return on common equity, then the earnings per share. In the, in the leverage issues, in the leverage ratios, debt to assets, debt to equity, long term debt to equity ratio, then the times interest earned then the fixed charge coverage, then the, the activity ratios, inventory turnover, then fixed assets turnover, total assets turnover, then the accounts receivable turnover, then the average collection period, then in the liquidity ratios, current ratio, quick ratio, inventory to networking capital, the other ratios like the dividend yield on common stock, price earnings ratio, dividend payout ratio and the cash flow per sh share. All these ratios are required to analyze a case as we could make out. So, making use of these ratios, we analyzed one case that was the case of Infosys and when we looked at the case of Infosys, we tried to apply most of these things, whatever we have discussed in the case analysis. Then we looked at the business strategy aspect of a company, what is meant by business strategy we said a business strategy, a company can make use of its business strategy to improve the competitive position of its business units 
and product stroke services within the specific market segment or industry. Then we also said for this business strategy, the generic strategy suggested by Porter could be helpful in drawing up the business strategy. We distinguished between the corporate strategy and the business strategy, saying whereas the corporate strategy asks what industry industries should the company be in, the business strategy asks how the company should compete or cooperate in each industry. So, we looked at the cost dynamics with respect to India. We took the example of textiles, then we discussed what are the causes for higher selling prices in India and we also looked at the cost versus market, whether it is a seller's market or a buyer's market. Then we looked at the effect of the experience curve, how experience curve can be useful in bringing down the cost per unit of the product. We illustrated that taking the example of an 80 percent experience curve. We looked at <coughs> break even analysis, the sensitivity with respect to break even analysis, that is which of the elements are important, whether it is the fixed cost or the variable cost, to what extent break even point gets affected. So, the sensitivity analysis was done with respect to fixed cost, variable cost and or price. As could be seen, decrease in fixed cost results in decrease in BAP, profit at a particular volume of production improves with lower fixed costs. Then when you have an increase in variable cost, it has a marked effect on BAP and its of profits, whereas a decrease in variable costs improves profitability. Similarly, an increase with respect to price, we said increase in permissible price, your break even point, what happens to break even point. Similarly, with respect to a particular volume of production, what happens to profitability with respect to price. We also looked at non-linear break even analysis. We moved along from the break even analysis down to further steps that is what is meant by a doom loop in an organization. We said an organization should avoid getting into a doom loop. In order to do that, it should constantly upgrade the product services and efficiency of the distribution channels. Suppose it has gotten got into the doom loop, to get out of it, it can think of refocusing on the small business units and a change has to be brought about in the firm's culture. We explained this, this doom loop by taking an example, how it can demoralize an organization. 
sometimes even a good organization also. So, this, this is the typical diagram of a doom loop which we presented and discussed. Then we came to the issue of corporate strategy. What are the important issues involved? Then what is meant by portfolio strategy? That is a market in which the company competes through its products or business units. Then we looked at what is meant by relative cost and competitive strategy. We took some examples, we looked at portfolio analysis and display matrices. The important aspect of portfolio analysis which we presented was the balancing of the portfolios the balancing of the portfolios with respect to three aspects that is the net cash flow, the state of development and the risk. We looked at several display matrices like the BCG matrix, the McKenzie matrix, the strategic planning institutes matrix or the profit impact of market strategy. Then the Arthur D. Little Companies matrix to name a few. Then when we looked at, uh, then we came to the strategic implementation side. When we looked at the strategic implementation side, we tried to sum it up by saying the implementation process has to answer these questions that is who will carry out the strategic plan, what should be done to align the plans, companies operations in the new direction and when and how everyone concerned should respond. So, then we also came to different types organizations stage 1, stage 2, stage 3 with respect to companies. What are the factors differentiating stage 1, stage 2 and stage 3? Stage 1 mostly entrepreneur, entrepreneurial, stage 2 functional areas coming into focus, Fage, stage 3 a real company operation comes into focus. So, whereas in stage 2 it can stage 1 it can be one unit one man show, stage 2 it can be one unit functionally specialized group, whereas in stage 3 it can be multi unit general staff, office and decentralized operations. So, then we looked at the different structures that can be made use of for operations. So, we presented it as a geographical structure, then a network structure, then we said how can firms be classified according to risk, whether the risk is low, moderate or high then what could be the courses of action, then what could be the alternatives for desired rate of growth and depending on all this what could be the best method of selection of strategy. So, we also presented what is called the matrix structure which can be which some companies make use of. We had, we presented it through different examples.
and also through diagrams we tried we we made a comparison between the two also and we looked at diversification we said it can be related in related it can be constrained or controlled and we looked at examples for this then we looked at the aspects of mergers and acquisitions as well in the indian context so when we looked at this mergers and acquisitions we looked at the different integrations horizontal vertical backward forward and the different types of synergies that can be had with respect to diversification then we looked at how the balanced scorecard can improve performance in an organization when we looked at mergers and acquisitions again we said how what are the methods of screening the industries for this merger and acquisition process what could be the method that could be adopted to assess the suitability of a proposal then what could be the valuation methods that can again be adopted by companies for this acquisition and mergers what are the different types of ratios one could consider so we listed some of the ratios which the company could consider then we gave the formula for what is the replacement value of assets we also looked at the scenario of managing after merger and how this merger process is likely to become dominant in the indian scene then we looked at the evaluation and control process with respect to strategic management we said it can be viewed as a five step model the first step we look at to determine what to measure then the second step to establish performance standards that is where you give a tolerance range then the third one the actual performance measurement then comparison of the actual with the standard becoming the fourth step then the fifth step is the taking corrective action so the fifth step that is taking corrective action becomes necessary when actual results are outside the tolerance range so before acting the manager has to ensure whether the deviation is due to chance fluctuation and whether the process is correct or appropriate so we also looked at the problems which can come in measurement of performance we said goal displacement could be one due to coming in due to short term orientation because the insistence on high roi in the short term can result in goal displacement that is the confusion of means with the end so occurs when activities intended to help managers achieve corporate objectives become ends in themselves or are adapted to meet ends other than those for which they are intended 
we looked at the two types of gold displacement that is the behavior substitution and sub optimization. Behavior substitution refers to a phenomenon where activities that do not lead to goal accomplishment are substituted for activities that do lead to goal accomplishment. In other words, the wrong activities and people who focused on these activities are being rewarded. Sub optimization is a situation where optimization occurs for a unit or a functional area to the detriment of an organization as a whole. We also looked at what is meant by strategy audit. So, the main idea of the strategy audit is to develop benchmarks. So, for that it involves identification of the area or process to be examined, then the determination of the measures of performance, then the competitors against whom the company has to benchmark, these have to be generally the best among the industry. Then difference in performance measurement of the company and the best in the class, then to develop tactical program for bridging performance gap, then the implementation of programs and comparing the results of new measures with those of best in class. So, we also gave some guidelines that is what could be used for the strategic planning implementation exercise. We said focus should be on critical success factors that is 20 percent that determine 80 percent of the results. Then control should be directed towards monitoring meaningful activities and results and should be timely. Controls can be both long term and short term. So, we also looked at what is the scenario with respect to Indian companies, where we said more com Indian companies are being certified by ISO. This should help them to launch themselves as global players and they can make use of this activity based costing which can help in getting a better understanding of each activity or functions value. It can also help in outsourcing decisions and embark on benchmarking. We then looked at what are the aspects of technology management, whether technology is driving the market or market is driving the technology. We said initially it appears as though technology is driving the market, then market takes over and mar it looks as the market is driving the technology. But the important aspect of it is technology management is crucial for corporate success and the top management has to devote considerable time for management of technology. And we looked at what is called the technology roadmap, and we said a company should, Indian company should go in for this. And when we said with respect to strategic for strategy formulation, also the company with respect to technology has to decide whether it goes in for product or process or RD, what is the source technology and whether it has the technological competence to make use of the source technology and product portfolio. We looked at corporate entrepreneurship, what are the three measures of R and D success that is improving technology transfer from research to business units then accelerating time to market for new products or processes, then institutionalizing cross functional participation in R and D. We also looked at 
a non-profit organization, non-profit organizations to come out with a theoretical model for uh, this corporate philanthropy, because in the Indian context now, so many organizations typically NGOs and other non-profit organizations, they are getting or they are being lent money or by donor organizations. So, what does the donors, what do the donors look for in the agencies? and how what how the agencies themselves should look inside and outside that is toward when they when they take up these types of programs all this was explained to you so using these different organizations what are the important factors that npos should consider we listed down the important factors in the Indian context as eight of them, responsiveness, credibility, capability, confidence, then channel, tangibility, top management and communication. Then we looked at what is this role of SFEs, SMEs in India and what are the guidelines for these SMEs which can be adopted to see that the venture succeeds. So, this and we also looked at some new aspects, one with respect to knowledge management, we explained what is this knowledge management. What are the factors of this knowledge management, how it is, how it has come in, how it is influencing that is the customer oriented trends or the e-service trends or the organizational trends, the employee mega trends, then what are the enterprise technology trends then the general technology trends and how these forces are driving the need for companies to integrate KM systems into their commerce process. What are the strategies for this KM, the role of this chief knowledge officers? Then, what are the key, who are the key actors, how they can be targeted in the KM system? What is the type of, how can one foster a knowledge network? And what is the method of delivering a purposeful message? All this was considered and we also looked at how we can look at knowledge management and new product development. When we, we also looked at IT and strategy with respect to the four dimensions that is the nature, evaluation and the returns use and the returns. So, what could be the IT strategy components? We said it should contain at least six components that is application of system components, application systems, system components, then application development components, infrastructure component, maintenance component operations component, security component. Then we looked at why should we view IT as a strategy, how you viewing IT is being viewed as a strategy and what is the influence of IT and pricing strategies. 
So, we, we listed down the important aspects that is the increased availability of information, enhanced reach, expanding interactivity. Then we also said organizations are emphasizing on strategy for IT. We looked at the Nolan's curve that is the strategic contribution of IT. the Nolan growth curve and the growth of management. Then we looked at R and D and strategy that is what are the elements of an explicit R and, R and D strategy. It should have, it should look at the nature of products developed, the nature of market sought, the nature of technology employed, then orientation and nature of new product processes. Then we looked at what is this R and D development within the industrial network, what are the characteristics and issues, what is meant by the cooperation strategies between R and D of national companies and international companies and what are the factors which are influencing R and D. So, when we said when we are looking ahead on this R and D, we said the framework on R and D needs to be further worked upon, marketability and profit angles need to be built in. There is a need to build in technology relationships in the technology roadmap framework, organizations should orient themselves towards strategic management of technologies. Then we looked at some more aspects on what is called, what is the strategic risk with respect to a company, we defined risk as a key strategic issue and said business is about risk. So, the bigger the risk, the, the greater the reward is still widely believed. We also looked at how military risk analysis led to the evolution of operations research. And how companies should cope up with this risk that is what is a variety of tools that can that have been evolved to support companies in managing discrete types of risk. And we explained all this through different diagrams. We looked at one model which can help a company in managing risks. This is the Clark and Verma approach, which can help the top management protect the company against catastrophic losses and support superior risk returns performance and shareholder value growth. And how the public relations and risk communication researchers, their role, how it can affect people's health, safety and environment that is the strategic risk communication. So, how it becomes a vital tool in this whole process. Then we said there is a need to achieve a delicate balance between risk communication efforts and technical information availability. A comprehensive understanding of strategic risk is required an integrated risk management methodology 
must be used for identifying and evaluating risk. Development of strategic risk management models can maximize shareholder value. So, these, these were the aspects we looked at with respect to strategic risk. When we looked at the different, uh, we also looked at the different matrices that could be adopted for portfolio as you know and we have explained each of these matrices. We also looked at some aspects like the J curve how it can be useful in an organization. We looked at some aspects of this convergence and divergence theorems. Then the end game strategies, what are these end game strategies? So, when do you look at the end game strategy, when the, when you are looking at a declining business. So, when the business is declining, the objective should be to see whether the life can be prolonged. So, we looked at this matrix given by Harrigan and Porter and said four types of strategic options could be considered that is leadership, niche harvesting and divest. We looked at some aspects of economic value added. We said the economic value added or the EVA is the after tax flow generated by a business that is cost of capital it has employed to generate that cash flow. How it can be useful is it can help in evaluating the performance of a company, makes use of four M's that is measurement, management system, motivation and the mindset. We also looked at what Porter has said with respect to national diamond that is his way of looking at a, at a nation's competitive advantage. We said he looks at it, this national diamond is looked at in four parts that is the factor conditions, demand conditions, role of supporting industries, then the firm structure, rivalry and strategy. In the factor conditions, land, labor, capital, entrepreneurship are taken into account. Then we looked at this space matrix, which can help in looking at the strategic position and what is the type of action evaluation that can be done a four quadrant framework was represented for determining an organization's overall strategic performance. This four quadrant framework could be looked at as aggressive, conservative, defensive and then competitive. We did this with respect to the internal dimensions of the organization basically two of them that is the financial strengths, takes into account the cash flows, liquidity, the return on invest or return on investment, ease of exit from the market. Then the competitive advantage takes into account the market share, product life cycle, customer loyalty, etcetera. Then the two external dimensions are environmental stability that is the technological changes, 
the rate of inflation, demand variability, etcetera. Then the industry strength that is the growth potential, profit potential, then the technological know how, etcetera. We also looked at what is the strategic control grid. So, it can help measure the power that a firm is able to establish in its working environment, mapping the control grid with respect to competitors can give the strategist useful ideas of the appropriateness of the strategy. So, five elements for this manifestation of power namely position, profits, process, product and perception. We also looked at what is meant by this web structure, when it can be brought on into play, the types of webs namely the market web, the consumer web, the technology web what is this x efficiency refers to the measure of a firm's management in minimizing the cost of producing a given output or maximizing the output given a set of inputs. What is the idea of the x efficiency is to capture the basic idea of the x efficiency is to capture the discrepancy between the efficient behavior of firms as implied by economic theory and their absurd behavior in practice. Basically introduced by this gentleman Lebenstein. So, all this to make use of with respect to organizations, then with respect to the sectors, the industries in which the organization is adopting, is operating, then the sector in which these industries are coming in, then the nation at large. So, we said we look at the primary sector, the secondary sector, then the tertiary sector, we looked at what are the types of influences the primary sector is having on the economy and what is the type of influence which the Indian economy is facing basically with the, in the present day context. When we looked at the present day context, we said services is contributing quite substantially for the Indian economy. As reported last, it was contributing nearly 54 percent to the GDP. So, takes into account the IT and the IT enabled services and all the other services, whether it is travel, hospitality, all those things put together. So, how the country is moving towards services? So, basically we are looking at, if you look at the post independent era, it was initially an economy which was dominated by agriculture. Then we started having the influence of the manufacturing industries, then we said industries should come in and contribute to GDP. Then the role of agriculture started to diminish to a certain extent with the industries also contributing. Then what is the scenario in the present day? You have the other sector that is the services sector 
contributing majorly to the development of the economy. So, this is the trend which is sustaining in developed countries also. If you look at a country like the United States, the contribution of services to the GDP is close to about 74 percent, whereas in India we are at 54 percent. It is very possible that the contribution of services in the Indian context is also likely to go further. So, these are all the aspects that we looked at in this subject on strategic management. So, we went through all these aspects and all these aspects are crucial for the functioning of a company. Then when a company functions well, it can help the industry at large. When the industry at large functions well, it can help the sector at large. When the sector at large help functions well, it can give a fillip to the economy. When the economy develops well, automatically the standard of living and all the other aspects also go up, making the country strong in the comity of nations. So, this is where the whole aspect of strategy, competitive advantage can be useful not only for a firm, it can be useful for the industry at large, it can be useful to the sectors in which they are operating, it can be useful to the country and it can be useful to the country to really have a competitive advantage among the group of nations in which we are really wanting to have a place as one we are looking at India to become a developed country soon. So, this is where strategic management could be very helpful. Thank you for listening. We stop here.